is section 3.5, solving by factoring. We're specifically going to look at when a is not equal to 0. As you can see in our example, here we have 2x squared minus x minus 3. Previously, we, we had discussed things about, well, what happens when, or what do you how do you factor when it's just simply x squared minus 2x plus 1. And we talked about taking the last number and, and trying to find the factors of that number and then trying to see how they add up to the inside number for b. Well, it's going to be very similar to what we do here, but it's going to be called the AC method because we're going to take a, who in this case is 2, and c, in this case, negative 3. And so, and the sign is kind of, you can, you can kind of ignore the sign, uh, but it does play a big, big role in choosing our numbers. Um, <clears throat> I need the signs to become a negative, three, uh, negative 6, so that means that my signs are going to be the opposite here. But uh, we'll hold off on the signs for a second. Um, what I want to do is I want to make sure that, first of all, checking when we're done, you go back and check by using FOIL and see if you, you get what you started with. That should be a part of everyone's uh, method. You always do it. You always go back and check to see if you got what you started with. If you, if you don't, then you, you made a mistake. Um, and I know a lot of people use things like the AC method, the pants method, the magic box, etc. Uh, whichever method you use, none of them are so foolproof that will keep you from making careless mistakes, including the method I'm using. Uh, it's easy to make a careless mistake. Make sure you go back and check. And that's the best thing you can do by, in this particular style of problem is just foil back together and see if you get what you started with. All right, so we're going to take our a and our c. In this case, it's 2 and negative 3. Multiply by a and c. We'll put that negative in there. So 2 times 3 is negative 6, or 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. We're going to write down the factors of, of, of 6, or negative 6, and determine which ones actually give us b in this case it's it's a negative one here so so i've written down the factors uh, of just six of six and one and two and three and i need to figure out which of these two factors two sets can give me a negative one well it's clear that i can only get a five or a seven with a six and a one but i can get a five or a one with a two and three Okay, in this case, we want to get negative 1, so I, I want you to write a very simple um, arithmetic equation where I get my, my b. So I want to get negative 1, so I simply take my two numbers and I make them become negative 1. So negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, and this, this solves the mystery of what am I going to do with my signs. Okay, so I'm going to have a negative 3, and I'm going to have a, a positive 2 when I, in my next step. Okay, step 3 is to write or rewrite the expression. We had the expression at the top, 2x squared minus x minus 3. Now I'm going to take that negative x. See how we, re we rewrote it at negative x, or in this case negative 1x, can be written as negative 3 plus 2. So it's what I've done here. So negative 3x plus 2x, and then minus 3. Because this is still exactly the same as what we started. If I simplify my and collect my like terms, I get exactly what I started with right up in the top. So we're going to go on down. Step four is to take what we've done in this particular example, in this part, and we're going to group by, fa uh, we're going to factor by grouping. And we're going to use our GCF um, for each little group. So number one, so in step four, it has kind of three parts. Number one, I just simply put on the parentheses. Now be careful, in, in the next example we're going to talk about well, what happens if the sign in the middle here is a negative. Okay, in this case it's a, it's a plus so it really doesn't make any difference. So I'm going to put my parentheses in the first two group and the last two and then I take each one and I factor out the GCF of the first part and then the second. Now in this case the only common factor is an X. So we pull out our x. So we have 2x minus 3 times my x, and then plus 1. Okay, There's nothing in common between the 2x and the negative 3. So we're going to write a 1 just as a placeholder. The 1 is already here, but I want to write it in this position because in my next step I want to see that number written there so I don't forget. 
So now this is kind of a check. Uh, if I've done it right, if it does factor, when I get to this stage, then I should have exactly the same thing in both parentheses. If I don't, either I've made a mistake or this does not factor. So I'd go back and check my work if I do have different items in between my parentheses. So we pull out that first part, 2x minus 3. We're going to write that first because that was what was common. And then I write whatever was left. In this case, is an x plus a 1. And this is why I wanted to write the plus 1 so that I could remember to write plus 1 here. And this would be the factored form. Now I want to make sure that I check that. So we go ahead and we multiply it back together, 2x minus 3 times x plus 1. We FOIL it. And then we collect our like terms, and we end up with 2x squared minus x minus 3, which is exactly what we started with. Don't skip that part. It is important that you do that, just to be careful and to check and to make sure you don't make mistakes. All right, okay, next one. This is a more challenging problem. And we start off with this equation, 32x squared minus 3x minus 14 equals 2x minus 1 squared. Well, I can't solve, and this, this is solve, so we're going to go all the way down to x equals. Um, so I, I'm going to have to collect like terms. That's an automatic first step. And I can't do that until I get these put together. And so we're going to take this. We're going to make sure we foil this whole side out, and then we get the next step. 32x squared minus 3x minus 14, and here's the other side expanded. 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. Seeing how I've got lots of common terms or like terms, I'm going to combine the 4x squared and the 32x squared by subtracting 4x squared. Then I'll add 4x to both sides, and I'm going to subtract 1 to both sides, and I'm going to get my final equation of 28x squared plus x minus 15 equals 0. Now make sure that I put everything on the left side of the equation because this is the side which, when I finish, I'm going to have a positive x squared. Whatever number you have a larger x squared on, you want to put it on that side. It's not wrong if you do it a different way, but then you have another negative sign to worry about, and that's just another place where you can make a careless mistake. Okay, so now we're kind of back to where we started in the first problem. I'm going to take this equation. I'm going to use the AC method to factor this one. So I'm going to multiply 28 times negative 15. I'll go ahead and add that back negative 15 here, which would give me negative 420. And so I went through the list and wrote all the factors of 420. And that's a lot of factors. Um, but I intentionally picked this one because I knew it was going to be a little bit harder. And so um, let's just look. You got 1, 2, 3. It goes almost all the way down, um, almost consecutively until it gets to 7. What I was looking for, I needed two numbers that would add up to give me the positive 1x at the top, or positive 1. I was kind of, uh, I was about to get hopeless um, until the very last set of numbers, 20 and 21, actually work. And so if we look at that, we have 28x squared. When I break it apart, plus 21x minus 20. If you notice, Remember, I wanted to get a positive 1x in this part here. So this is what I'm coming from. I'm taking the 1 and I'm breaking it apart into 21 minus 20, which is still positive 1x. Then the minus 15 comes down. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to group my first two numbers, my last two numbers, and I'm going to use my GCF for each little group. Now note the yellow part. This is a negative sign in front of 20. Now, in order to make the fewest amount of mistakes, I'm going to keep the negative sign with the 20 because I know the negative 20 is there. So instead of put the, putting the parentheses right in front of that, that would make a that would give me a mistake. Okay, it's going to make me factor, and I'll probably turn the 15 into a positive, and that would have been wrong. So what we do is we do this. You put the plus sign out. You'd keep the negative with the 20 and just put a plus sign in between the two. Okay, I put a little note out here beside it. And then the 15 just carries down. Common both terms in the first group is a 7x. Always remember to check your number and the variable to take out when you do your GCF. Sometimes they only have a number, sometimes only a variable, sometimes both. And I'm left with a 4x and a 3. 
Now look, in the second group, I have negative 20x and negative 15. You always want your x to be positive. And so I'm going to factor out a negative 5, because 5 goes into 20 and 15, and I want to make sure that I have a positive x in front here. So I'm going to factor out the negative 5, like you see here, and I'm left with the 20 plus 3. Now that's another confirmation I did it right, because the 4x plus 3 and a 4x plus 3 which means I've got the exact same thing inside my parentheses, which is exactly what I wanted. If I rewrite it, I pull out what's in the parentheses as common, then I re rewrite in 7x minus 5 second equal to 0. Now if I had just asked you to factor this problem, you would be done. But because the question says solve the equation, we have to take this and go all the way down to x equals. So you set 4x plus 3, and 7x minus 5, each one equal to 0 like you see in this step. And then I just, I'll add the 3, divide by 4, or subtract 3, divide by 4, and add 5 and divide by 7, and I finish my results at the bottom. Okay, let's recap real quickly. Factoring when a is not 0, we use the AC method. Okay. If you use what we call the pants or the magic box, the pants method is basically what I'm doing. Um, they just draw a little bit differently. The magic box is definitely different than what I'm doing, but it uses the same ideas. Be very careful about that. Um, it doesn't always work. Make sure that you check your answers just like we, we've done here. Okay, Step one was to multiply A times C, then look for factors so that it adds up or subtracts to get your middle term, your B term. Then you rewrite it as four groups, four terms, and then group the first and second and the last two, and then we do the GCF by factoring, by grouping, and then we work it out and simplify the problem, and then check to see if we got it in the end. And that is the lesson for 3.5. It's just factoring. Make sure that you attempt the word problems in the homework. They are a little more difficult, um, and they make you think you're going to have to draw a picture sometimes, Take those over, look at them, and practice this until you understand it.